Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today is very exciting for me because I just got a box with a Ryzen 5 2400G as well as a Ryzen 3 2200G from Amazon and today we're going to take a look at the 2400G and do a little bit of CPU overclocking and who knows, I may even get to a little bit of APU overclocking. All right, so you guys kind of get a little bit of an unboxing experience as well here. And there they are. We have the Ryzen 3. This is the 2200G. We're gonna set this guy aside. We'll be doing plenty with it, but just not quite yet. And this is the star of the show today. This is the Ryzen 5 2400G with 11 Vega compute units on board. There's the, there's a shot of the actual chip itself. Let's go ahead and get it out of its box. Okay, in case you didn't know, the Ryzen APUs are shipping with the Wraith Spire cooler. So this is the smaller of the two coolers. Um, again, we're gonna be doing some testing with these things but I'm gonna leave the stock thermal paste intact right now because I'm not using this cooler for my testing today. So for today, we're gonna be using the Freezer 33. This is a cooler that I recently reviewed from Arctic. So definitely a step up from the stock Wraith Spire cooler here. And the reason we're using this cooler is simply that I feel like if you wanna get the most out of this process, you probably need a different cooler for it but you don't want to spend a ton of money for it because otherwise you're defeating the purpose of the chip itself. So instead, we're sticking with a cooler that's pretty budget. These things are about $30 to $35, so right in the same price range as a Hyper 212 Evo would be, and probably gives very similar performance to that cooler as well. Okay, so the APU is mounted under the uh, Freezer 33 cooler now. I did have to pull out my 16 gigabyte kit from my uh, main rig. So this is a 16 gigabyte two by eight kit of uh, DDR4 RAM. It is running at 3000 megahertz, or at least that's what it's rated at. Hopefully I'll be able to hit that with no problem with this Trident Z RAM. So let's go ahead and hop into the UEFI. And by the way, if you're doing something or, or buying one of these APUs and you are using an older generation motherboard, so B350 X370, then you may need to get an update if you bought the board before these guys launched. Now, um, I expect as time goes by, eventually these motherboards will ship with the correct BIOS uh, to support Raven Ridge, but make sure to check your vendor's website for that UEFI update. Um, I've read that apparently if you live near a micro center, they actually will update your UEFI for you. It, it, they charge something for it, I think. But I, I did hear, or at least read rather, that they uh, are able to do that there, and, and hopefully other places are as well if you need to. But you definitely will need the most updated UEFI or BIOS for your motherboard to get Raven Ridge to run properly. Okay, so before we go and run our baselines, I do wanna make sure my RAM is running at 2933. So we're actually gonna enable, yes, profile two for my uh, AXMP. I believe that's DOCP for those of you that are in an ASUS motherboards UEFI. But we're gonna leave everything else by itself and we're gonna just run some basic benchmarks in Cinebench, both a GPU as well as a CPU benchmark. And then we'll come back here and start playing with things like the core ratios and voltages and that sort of thing. So we'll be right back for that. Okay, so here we are back in the back end of the MSI board in the UEFI. So we're just gonna change this CPU ratio to 39. 
and see if we can run this thing at 3.9 gigahertz. Um, we're not touching anything else at this point, just the CPU ratio. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and set the voltage on this to 1.35 volts instead of, right now it's running at auto, but it's in the back end, so it says 1.416. I don't know if it's actually running that high or not, but we're gonna see if we can run this at 3.9 gigahertz at 1.35 volts. Okay, so we booted into Windows just fine, so we wanna open up CPU-Z to make sure that we're running at the uh, specifications that I gave in the UEFI. So here we have, uh, when it sort of catches up, yep, we have 3.9 gigahertz, and then pop back over the memory, memory looks good. Let's see if we can finish a Cinebench run using these specs. Okay, so we did see quite a bit of improvement with that overclock. We went from, I believe, 807 beforehand to 853. Now I'm gonna put this thing under load for about 10 minutes in IDA64 to see if this thing is even remotely uh, stable at this clock speed uh, for an extended period of time. So we'll go ahead and switch over to IDA and see if this thing can survive at 1.35 volts for about 10 minutes and if it can then we'll bump up the overclock and see if we can get to 4 gigahertz on this. Okay guys, so uh, you noticed that I was able to get through my Cinebench run at 1.35 volts and 4.0 gigahertz, but obviously it crashed pretty much immediately in IDA, as well as it did when I was at 1.375 volts. So I'm going ahead and running this at 4.0 gigahertz, 1.4 volts, which to me, 1.4 volts is on the sort of higher end of what I wanna run my CPUs long term. Now if you can keep it cool, then that voltage should be fine, probably even over the extremely long run. But again, it's all about keeping it cool because heat is the enemy. And obviously we just crashed out there, but it wasn't a terminal crash. We didn't lock up the system this time. So I think if I tweak settings enough, then I could probably get this stable at 4.0 gigahertz, but I am very happy with a 3.9 gigahertz overclock on the CPU side. So in my next video, I'm actually gonna try to overclock the GPU side of this APU and see how much extra performance I can get out of that thing. So right now, my quick and dirty overclock seems to be about 1.35 volts, though if I ran IDA for a longer period of time, I may have to up that voltage a little bit to get it pretty much stable at 3.9 gigahertz and it looks like that should be a, a frequency that I can get rock solid with a fairly small uh, amount of voltage tweaking. So that's gonna be it for me today with the 2400G. We'll take a look at the 2200G as well in the somewhat near future. But if you wanna stay tuned for those upcoming videos on these Ryzen processors that just came out, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. You can also like this content, you can share it, you can comment down below, let me know what you think about this particular overclock. If you want, you can follow me on social media at Hoosier Hardware, both Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.